Hello, Kevin Clarkson here. I'm inviting you to be with us at our Pikes Peak Prophecy Summit this June 17, 18, and 19 in lovely Colorado Springs. We have a wonderful jam-packed three days for you with over 20 prophecy specialists and speakers. Let me give you a couple of three highlights that'll be there on Friday night. We're going to see a premiere screening of the Samaritan. It's the true story in film of the uh, Romanian communist regime and how that came to fall by the influence of Christians there in the land. It's by director Kevin McAfee who will be with us live and in person. And then on Saturday we have Bob Cornuke with us who will be discussing his possible location for the temple that is a new site being proposed. This would change everything in the Middle East. And then finally on Sunday we wrap it up with the great rapture debate. We have a pre-trib rapture and a post-trib rapture specialist who will go head to head and we will take place. I hope you'll be there with us. It's going to be a great conference. See you there. Thank you for joining us at Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Dr. Kevin Clarkson. We have as a guest today in our studio, Pastor Billy Crone from uh, Las Vegas. He is a wonderful man that loves the Lord, loves the scripture, and he's been leading a study at his church through the different cults and religions of the world. He's here today to talk about the latest installment of that, which is a topic of great interest to all of us, Islam, a religion of war or peace. Yep. Welcome, yep. Billy. Thank you, Dr. Clarkson. It's always great to be on. Well, we, I'm sure both of us have had reason to study Islam in, uh, you know, sporadic bits and pieces over these last few years, yeah. as it's been so much in the news and there have been attacks in our world. But you've done an in-depth look here for the history, the advancement, and the doctrines of Islam. And tell us, basically, uh, can you give us your conclusion at the uh, front? Basically, uh, we're being lied to uh, uh, in the American public. Mm -hmm. uh, dare I say, even in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a movement in the church called Chrislam. And the premise is that somehow you can merge Christianity with Islam because true Islam is just a God of love and we're supposed to love our nature and that we can blend and the two. The same. And that is a lie from the pit uh, of hell. And I'll I use agree. those strong words. That is a lie from the pit it of is. hell. The church is being duped. The American people are being duped. Uh, the reason why we're seeing the behavior of ISIS and uh, Hamas and Al Qaeda and, and the media always wants to portray it. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not real Islam. That's just a small sect of Islam. Unfortunate fringe group. No, that's a lie, too. We're being mm -hmm. lied to. They're doing exactly what that book, the Quran, tells them what to do. Uh, they're, if, you, if anything, they're following it to a T. Don't recommend it, obviously. It certainly isn't Christian or Christianity. Uh, but it is what Islam teaches. Uh, we break it down. You know, the different types of uh, Muslims. You got the Sunnis and the Shiites. There's Sufis and some other subgroups. Right. But the bulk of them is the Sunnis and the Shiites. And the American people are being lied to. And the church is falling for it too. Uh, that uh, it's just the, you know, the Shiites, the small radical extremist fundamentalists, you know, who do this behavior. The bulk of Islam, the Sunnis and the others, they, they you know, 80% or so, uh, they don't believe that. That's a lie. We mm -hmm. actually record them in their own meetings saying that they are for Sharia law. They are for the beheadings. They are for the capital punishment, the killing of people, just like the rest of them. This is what the Quran teaches. And, and it, it blows me away when you hear people in the church OK, and we call out major leaders in the church who are promoting this, quote, Chris Islam movement. It's ridiculous. If anybody comes up to you and says that, oh, Christianity and Islam can work together and find what's common. They number one, apparently you don't know anything about Christianity and you certainly don't know anything about Islam because they are so diametrically opposed. It's absolutely ridiculous. They are completely at odds. Yeah. Um, in how every can facet. darkness and light have fellowship together? How right. can Christ and Satan be joined? Yeah. Uh, you know, our God gave his life for us. Islam asked you to give your life for your God. Exactly. And one of the beautiful things that we have, of course, is a direct personal relationship with God, the creator of the universe through Jesus Christ. They don't have any of that stuff. Right. Right. Ours is a salvation of grace, not of works. They, theirs is all of works, right? You got to believe the right stuff. You got to do the right stuff. The pillars of Islam and things of that nature. That's not at all like Christian. How in the world could you say these things can work? It, it, it blows me away. So we're, we're being lied to, and this is, if you will, this is the whole enchilada. We went over the top on this thing. Uh, I don't know if I was skirting burnout trying to put all this together with other things we were doing. But, uh, man, we're excited to get it out because it's a hot topic. And, again, not only for the American people, but for the American church. Get equipped on what this really teaches. This is jam-packed full of news clips, video clips. These are these. I'm not making this up because, you know, oh, you just got that from anti-Islam.com. Or I, I don't even know if that's a site, whatever. But yeah. that's the mindset. Oh, you can't trust yeah. that. 
those people don't understand the real Islam. No, this is, we quote the verses from the Quran, uh, the Hadith and the Sirah, uh, you know, with the further sayings of Muhammad and their battle stories and all that other stuff. And that's what they go by. No, we quote from them. And we, we even have yes. them on tape. This is what they're saying. We're being lied to. This is true Islam. But you're not being told that. Uh, we also go into how is it penetrating into the United States? Not only the church. Uh, there is an Islamization mandate that has been, it's been, it's been going on for decades. They're over here in the United States to take over the United States. Just like what's happening in Europe. It's coming here. It's already started it's here. But the media. It's been working for decades. It's yes, it has. It's been slowly working and building. Um, I'm sure your research led you to, you know, the grants that have been given to our universities, yeah. the Islamic studies departments yeah. that are being uh, put in, w the billions, I mean, that Harvard's been given. And yeah. then just, it's on and on, it, it's, it's, uh, it's infiltrating and it's deadly. Well, and we, we exposed that too, and again with the actual video clips. In fact, at the very end, we pulled into the studio and did uh, three different interviews uh, with select groups of people. And certainly the, the uh, Islamization of the United States right now, and it's been going for a while, is all over the place. It's in our government, it's in our court system, it's in our school system, it's in the media, and we document everything on video. This isn't just us making this up. So and you, you show that the Muslim Brotherhood is very cozy with the White House, <laughs> and that uh, members of Muslim Brotherhood are virtually throughout our security agencies and writing our manuals. Y yes, and we got one study, it's number seven out of the eight, it's all just answering this question. If anything, get it for this one. Uh, is Obama a Muslim? And within 50 to 55 minutes, just that one message. That's just one of the mm -hmm. eight that we have of all this evidence. Here's what's really going on. Here's the true teachings. 22 video clips. 22 video clips of here's the words coming out of his mouth, his wife's mouth. Here's his family history. Here's what they're doing, etc. It's all there for you to see. And it's... You can make up your own mind what's going on. In fact, what's wild, this was, talk about the sovereignty of God. This was cool. Uh, there's, a, there's a sign on the internet out, uh, in Kenya. It says, yeah, welcome to Kenya, birthplace of right. Barack Obama, right? Now, if you go to Snopes, right, they say, oh, no, this is not true, blah, 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 blah. And I was wanting to share that when I came across the study, but because they said, no, it's, you know, I said, no, I want to stick to stuff that can be verified, obviously, as a researcher. I kid you not. And so the next day, as I'm getting ready to teach that, that night, that lesson, and, uh, uh, a great evangelist in, in Las Vegas, his name's uh, Tim Barons, and he goes and witnesses all over the world. And I mean all over the world. He goes all over the world and goes and witnesses and shares gospel. Well, he comes in, he says, hey, so what are you teaching on tonight, Pastor Bill? I said, I told him about that. And he says, well, hey, are you going to show the sign? I says, well, yeah, I was going to, but Snopes, you know, says whatever. And he says, listen, I was there. He said, I was there. I stood by that sign. He says, in fact, the only reason why I didn't take a picture of myself beside that sign was because I said, well, it's all over the internet. Everybody knows it'd be redundant. He says, not only is that sign real and we're being lied to by Snopes. He says, I talked to every, he says, every person I talked to when I was over there, right there uh, in Kenya, sharing the gospel, everybody said he was a Muslim. His whole family's Muslim, et cetera, et cetera. So we got all that stuff just on that one message. But back to the Islamization in our government. And it's all documented. Um, right now in the White House, we have a Muslim advisor to the White House. Mm -hmm. We have a Muslim advisor uh, to the FBI. We have a Muslim advisor to the Department of Justice. We have a Muslim advisor for the Homeland Security. Are you kidding me? Now, that's just the government. It's way beyond that, if you can believe that. And, and, and we're talking about this earlier today and uh, on the way from the airport. And so well, let, let's, let's put that in a different time frame in history. What, what, would, what would people, what would the American people do <laughs> if during World War II against the Nazis, right, in Germany, right, with Hitler, right, what if it came out in the American public that the President of the United States, right, they had a Nazi advisor in the White House. They had a Nazi advisor in the FBI. They had a Nazi advisor in the Department of Justice, and of course they didn't have Homeland Security at that time, but let's throw in the CIA. They had a, mm -hmm. right, a Nazi advisor. What would the American people do? That'd be an uproar. That's what's going on right now with this administration, right? And it's absolutely crazy. Now, that's just the government. It's all of the court system. In fact, court rulings, total hypocrisy. Uh, there's one case that we share where this uh, Muslim man uh, had uh, divorced his uh, Muslim wife. And uh, uh, in that, uh, he was basically, even after the divorce, he was going and violating her sexually. And uh, the court actually ruled that that was his religious belief that he could do that because that's what Islam allows, right? And they let him go in our courts. Are you kidding me? 
Try anybody else try that. So there's favoritism, of course. People are being bought off in high positions. We even have, for the first time in American history, we had congressmen, we got this recorded, being sworn into office, Muslim congressmen being sworn into office, not on the Bible, but on the Quran. Absolutely crazy. In the schools, right? And uh, in the schools, we have uh, documented that uh, the kids are being taught uh, to, to make up your own Muslim name. They're being taught uh, the five pillars of Islam. They're being uh, taught to pray literally mm-hmm. as a school exercise towards Mecca, right? Try that with Christianity, right? They're supposed well, to keep they're all doing religions artwork out. too that, that writes out the confession of Islam. Yeah. They've been, you know, not even realizing what they're writing, copying Arabic letters. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but this has been uh, pointed out in several public schools. Yeah. Well, and we also document that uh, also in schools, you mentioned one school, I think this was in Illinois, you can see it there, the actual video clip, we're not making mm-hmm. it up, and uh, that they actually had uh, rewritten the Pledge of Allegiance and they had them recite it in Arabic. And instead, one nation under God, that you said one nation under Allah. This is in the American school system right now. And uh, people are being brainwashed. We, we pulled in, I mentioned uh, uh, at the end, we do three interviews with, uh, th- from three different angles. Uh, and one of them was a, a Christian pastor from Tennessee. We flew in and did an interview with him. And because uh, we already had talked about and did news clips with here's what's going on in the schools and et cetera. Man, he had an inside scoop because he went to, to battle uh, for his daughter mm. in his community I in see. Tennessee. And uh, uh, what he had mentioned, he brought the actual textbooks. Now, he had to buy the textbooks from his own pocket, like 150 bucks for two of them. Okay, but he was finally able to get the textbooks online. He found found a copy of them, and uh, what he shares and exposes, and we got the actual textbooks. You can see the thing. He says he found out that uh, in their in the new Common Core curriculum, right, is they were promote. They had thirty some pages, thirty some pages on Islam and how wonderful it was. He even showed me. He even sees on the interview. He says, "Oh, how good it is for women." Are you what? Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, and, and it's a total lies, total fabrication. But 30 pages on Islam in these textbooks. You know how much was on Christianity or even Judaism? Rhymes was zero. You've got to be kidding me. So, they're in the textbooks, they're promoting this. He also said this. He says, "Listen to this." He said, um, First of all, the kids, they would uh, have to do some tests at home. They'd be given like some PowerPoint presentation to further study on the Islam. And they would send a link via email and they had to have a password. He said, well, first of all, most parents don't even know. They don't even know the password. They're not even going to get a clue. And, right. and it shows again with them, here's your practice Muslim home and all that crazy stuff. But he also said this. He says, uh, he says um, the kids in that class, totally sneaky. When they finished the class, they had to hand the textbook back into the teacher. They couldn't take it home. And then when they came back the next day to the class again, they got their textbook back. They couldn't take, you tell, and it's all documented, mm-hmm. right? This is really what's going on it's in covert, our country. It's cover up, it's secrecy. And right. uh, you know, I just wanted to go to the scripture for a moment because as we talked about this, you thought of Jesus, you know, warning about the final times and all the deception. He warns us over and over in Matthew 24 not to be deceived. And Billy, you even reference verse nine, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Yeah. You want to kind of elaborate on what we were talking about uh, with reference to that and the killings and the uh, yeah. you well, know, hatred of the people of the book. Yeah, exactly. And back to the current administration again, we document again all that stuff is, uh, you know, our Christian brothers and sisters are being slaughtered like flies. Uh, all over the world, mm-hmm. uh, even with the beheadings. It's a genocide today. Well, it, it, and the it U.S. Is. finally admitted that last week. Yeah, but apparently our president doesn't want to. No, he doesn't. Right, and he, we document, he is absolutely silent. Oh, oh, and we will document what he will stand up for uh, is uh, when a Quran is burned and they kill American soldiers and four others are injured, mm-hmm. he apologizes to the killers. Right. I mean, that's, that's what we're dealing with here. This he is what's going on. He also brings up the Crusades and asks us to be apologetic. <laughs> that's another thing. Yeah, yeah, and we document yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so you go to a Christian prayer breakfast, a National Day of Prayer, mm-hmm. and the Easter prayer, and you use both of those as a platform to slam Christians. To bash Christians, yeah. But uh, you speak extremely glowingly at the Ramadan festivals that you have at the White House. And right? it's the most beautiful sound you ever heard was the Islamic call to prayer in the morning. It's in his, in his book, his yeah, autobiography. Exactly. Well, and we also have him, he was able, we got this on, on uh, again on video, and uh, to, uh, in perfect Arabic accent, able to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, do the Muslim prayers. And, and, and what is the Muslim prayer? It's based, you know, I'm not gonna, I, 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 I don't even wanna say it myself mm-hmm. as a Christian, but basically it's all, uh, it's 
Allah is the only true God, etc. cetera, Muslim, uh -huh. and repeat it over and over again. I can't even get that out of my mouth. Yeah. How, how could you sit there on one hand and say you're Christian and, and, and you say nothing when your Christian, supposed Christian brothers and sisters are being slaughtered like flies? How could you sit there and host these Ramadans? And how could you, we got them on tape. How could you mock this scripture? Mm -hmm. Actually had the audacity to say uh, it, it, uh, uh, that, that if we follow the, the, the Beatitudes, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, uh, I'd, I'd you know, doubt that our uh, military could survive the application of that. Huh? Right, How know, could you say that as a Christian? Oh, here's one. We got one. <laughs> it's video after video. I'm telling you, you got to check it out because people, people are so brainwashed, even the church. Oh, no, no, no. It's just a small, tiny sect of Islam. It's just those little bad guys. True Islam can merge with Christianity. Life from the pit of hell. So we chalked it full of video evidence in their camp. Here's what they're saying. Here's what it teaches. We're not making this up. And, uh, but uh, we got a, a, a you know, w what level Christianity? Because on one hand, you know, the Obama says, oh, you know, we're Christian, you know, when it's convenient, right? And uh, so we, this is a recent interview with uh, Michael uh, Strahan, and uh, she's, he's interviewing her, and she admits on tape, this is their level of Christianity. We got it on film. Mm. And she said, it's, he says, well, he says, so, you know, where, where could we find, you know, the Obamas on any given Sunday? stuff like you know, so, and she goes well we, we try to go to church services most Easter's you know uh, if we can but you know that's if we can and you know the girls are so busy and and you know we look at Sundays as more of a downtime and and so he says so so basically what you're telling me is if on any given Sunday we could see the um, uh, Obama family sitting around lounging and napping she goes yep that's it. it's like oh man you guys are strong mighty Christians mm -hmm. you, you, and yet your husband can find the time to go to a Muslim mosque that has deliberate ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. That happened. Got a problem with that. I do too. Got a serious problem with that. I do too. Well, allow me to offer this uh, product to our viewers. This is um, Islam, Religion of War or Peace, and uh, Pastor Crone's latest uh, study of world religions and cults, the religion of Islam, eight studies. Um, this material covers things like the uh, hidden history and behavior of Muhammad. Let's talk about that after this <laughs> in a moment. Yeah. Uh, the unknown <laughs> practice and beliefs of modern day Muslims, dangerous global Islamic invasion, Islamization of American courts, schools, and media, the life of Chrislam in the church. Important here, how best to witness to a Muslim. Yeah. We always want to say that, you know, the Lord and us, we hate this false religion. We believe it's satanic. But the people that are under this darkness, they're, they're those for whom Christ died. And we need to love them and share with them. This is available to you. Go to the website or the 800 number on your screen, prophecyinthenews.com. This is available for a cost of $24.95 plus shipping and handling. And I do want to mention uh, to our listeners right now, Billy, you're going to be a guest at our uh, Prophecy Summit in the month of June. And we're looking forward to you being with us there as well. Yeah, uh, thanks again for the invite and looking forward to it ourselves. Uh, Always a great time and it's definitely a time to get God's truth out there. Absolutely. Well, listen, in the time that remains, maybe let's talk backwards and go back to the origins. Ah, yes, we had fun with that. Let's, let's and, yeah, uh, <laughs> share some of the things that uh, you uh, gleaned as you studied that. Yeah, well, and again, I'm going to say the true history because uh, we've mm -hmm. been to look at it. And, and, and again, just dealing with the Quran, what, what they state there. And a lot of people don't even realize with the Muhammad and just the upbringing and stuff, you know, he was a. Uh, uh, born over there in Mecca, Saudi Arabia area, of course, and I think 570, and and uh, uh, he uh, was, uh, his father had died before uh, he was born, just mm -hmm. before he was born, raised by his mom, but then his mom died when he was six, when he was being raised by his grandpa. Well, his grandpa died, I think, when he was eight, so he's basically raised by his uncle. And, uh, and, and by the way, interesting thing, his uncle never became a Muslim, his own family, so kind of a little interesting tidbit there. And uh, so basically one day he decides to go into this cave uh, to meditate. First mistake. Anyway, so he goes <laughs> in this cave to meditate. This is where the whole thing comes from, right? So we're going, where, right. how'd this start, right? Let's give you the benefit of the doubt, so to speak. And so you go in the cave to meditate. And honestly, they even record this. Uh, something showed up. A spirit showed up. And he actually thought it was an evil spirit at first. A jinn, what they call a jinn, mm -hmm. where we get the genies and stuff of that nature. And an evil spirit, right? Kind of freaked him out, right? And uh, so then he, of course, leaves and he goes back again. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, okay, no, it's the uh, angel Gabriel. Yeah, that's who it is, right? And so at first he had trepidations, like, what's this stuff? What's going on? And, and later, I think it was his wife and uh, one of his wives, 
Uh, and a cousin's like, no, no, this is uh, all, uh, uh, he wouldn't lie to you, uh, run with it, you know, basically. Right, but right they encouraged, that, they did. They did, and, but he had reservations. His first initial response was, something evil is going on. So that usually doesn't get talked about, right? And, uh, oh, by the way, uh, Muhammad couldn't read or write, right? And so over, uh, apparently, supposedly a 23-year period, we hope he got it right, uh, he was uh, reciting, that's where the word Quran means, to recite recitation, right. right? That he got these supposed messages right, that he couldn't read or write, and stuff of that nature. So kind of a spurious, interesting uh, background there. And uh, of course, so he believes he's charged by this uh, God, Allah, right? To uh, 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 propagate that, you know, basically Allah is the only way, and you, you're his slave, and the whole duty, again, Islam means uh, submission. A Muslim is a submitted one, what? To the demands of Allah, Allah, right, and do what he says, and, and uh, somehow try to work your way to paradise, and maybe you will, maybe you won't, I don't know, is a mysterious will of all, no personal relationship, they have nothing that we have, and that's a major point in witnessing, that we need to let them know what they could <coughs> have through the one and only God, uh, and through Jesus Christ, but anyway, so uh, basically with the history, then he starts out, and uh, for, for a while there, uh, after s several years, they only had a few converts, whatever, and they were struggling financially, right, and uh, being persecuted and stuff. And uh, all of a sudden, he got a new revelation. And <laughs> this is supposed to be from, this is their God, Allah. Hey, it's okay to raid people and steal their money. So that's what he did. So he raided the next caravan and, and apparently won the battle, so to speak. And hey, money problem solved, right? Period and of from war that began. period forward, you do the first 154 years of their history, mm -hmm. they averaged a major battle every other year. And from that point forward, their whole history is built on, not because like we think, we think, well, hey, I'll share the gospel with somebody about Jesus Christ. And hey, if they don't respond, that's between them and God. I'm just the newspaper boy, mm -hmm. newspaper girl, so to speak, and move on. I hope they do, but whatever. Not them, no. right? You submit or you die, right? And that's how it's advanced. And it's the same thing Conversion that's being repeated escalated today. escalated through the roof. A absolutely, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and of course, if you can go and steal people's stuff and, and if you can kill the guys and then marry their wives and young daughters, and I mean young yeah. daughters, right? Hey, you know, people Yeah, are there's hey, an appeal to the base nature right. of man there. Exactly, and when what's going on. And, and that's how it's advanced through the years. And what people don't realize is this is nothing new. This is what was going on in Europe before. It's now being repeated in our lifetime. You know, you got Charles the Hammer. I like that name, the Hammer. You know, he put a stop to the Islam invasion because it's always been by the sword, mm -hmm. right? And in, in, in advancing. And uh, he put a stop to that. But folks, it's, it's going on today. It's going on. It's being repeated today. But one of the things that they're doing is they're literally coming into, and not only with the Islamization, and we expose this with the st statistics, is they're coming into an area and their birth rate, they are overpopulating. They come in with immigration, or whatever. They are having kids galore. And of course, right. kids are brainwashed from wee high to follow this stuff too. And so they're literally overtaking countries by sheer population. Exactly. And, and that same thing's happening here uh, in the United States. But that's what Europe is experiencing. The, again, this is what they teach. It's advancement by, by uh, a torture. It's a, the, the, the Quran, and, and Kurt, we document all this. Uh, torture, burning, beheading, uh, again, Sharia law. Mm -hmm. They want Sharia law. What's Sharia law? You say anything bad about Allah, you die. You say anything bad about Muhammad, you die. You say anything bad about the Quran, you die. Uh, you convert from Islam to anything else, you die. If you're the person that led that person mm -hmm. to uh, away from Islam, you die. Uh, it horrible Many against death penalties. It, over and over and over again. Women, horrible treatment mm -hmm. towards women uh, and things of that nature. Uh, the women, you, if you're raped, you, you can't even be a defense in the court case. Uh, you can't even drive a car. Uh, it just, it absolute hor this is what comes with this religion. And uh, until people realize this is Islam. It's not ISIS. Exactly. It's <laughs> not Al-Qaeda. It's not Ham Hamas. It's not just a small segment. This is Islam. You're going to constantly dance around the issue. Well, one of the um, one of the ways that they're infiltrating and I think embedding in our Western civilization is through these no go zones. Yeah. And obviously that came up in Brussels. There's a whole whole area or nest, if you will, where the Paris suspect, the guy that helped plan the, the Paris bombings back last fall, had returned to his home in Brussels and his neighbors covered for him and hit him mm -hmm. uh, for apparently weeks even though there was a warrant for his arrest and they knew where his former location was. But these areas are known among the police as no-go zones. 
They're also known to exist, obviously, in entire areas of Paris and France, but also now in Europe. And as you said, we're being lied to. Uh, there were official statements from the British that, uh, no, there are not. But on taped interview, the police actually admitted, yeah, there are areas, and we will not go in there. Yeah. Well, there's but areas. The cops like, are afraid. Well, absolutely. There's areas already here in the United States. Whole communities are being taken over. Mm -hmm. One of them we clearly document is. I wanted in, to ask you about what you in, found here in, in our country. In Dearborn, Michigan, it's basically being taken over. And that's not the only one. In fact, some of the research are saying not just communities are being taken over again with the heavy mm -hmm. population. And, uh, oh, by the way, let me backtrack. No go zone. Let me put it back in another element of history again. Sure. How would it. What country, what country in the right mind during World War II would say, you know what, we need to be politically correct. We need to have Nazi no-go zones, yeah. right? We need to allow them to have their own little protected bubble that we can't enter right. in the United States, anywhere in the world. It's, it's insane. It right? is insane. Same thing's being done. And, and I use that analogy because that's what's going on. We are under a threat, and these people, it's about world domination. It's not a game. This is not funny. Right. Uh, we m talked before about the, the rape epidemic in Sweden. This is what they're being encouraged. And they say, oh, you deserve it. Be a uh, 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 European woman because you dress that way or American woman. It's happening here. But one out of four women are uh, in Sweden right now are guaranteed to be raped. This is really going on. They're, they're rounding up girls. They're putting them in these sex slave rings and stuff. This is going on in Europe. And we're kidding ourselves if we don't think uh, it, it's coming here. But it's already there's uh, we uh, document at least 35 different cell groups. In the United States, and that's just what's, what what really is really going on out there. And this isn't counting the communities that's already been taken over. This is the cell groups that are training to be armed in the United States in 22 different states in our country. There is a powder keg being built, just getting ready to go off. And uh, I it, agree. And we you know, we got to deal with it. One of our presidential candidates was uh, hammered <laughs> this last week for <laughs> suggesting that we go ahead and patrol Muslim neighborhoods. Yeah. where we've known that there's suspected terrorist activity. Exactly. And there's been this political reaction to that. Again, we're just, uh, we're deceiving ourselves. Yeah, and that's why we're excited to get this resource out. It says, hey, listen, here's the evidence. You look at it and uh, you make up your own mind. But it is time that we deal with the truth in America, even in the American church, get equipped on this issue and, and, and deal with it appropriately. Which includes, as you mentioned, we need to reach out to these people. I, you know, so I know this might sound kind of, uh, uh, basic, but hey, yeah. do you want to keep somebody from chopping your head off or killing you or raping you? Share the gospel. Yeah. Christians, true Christians, Amen. don't do that. We need to. The gospel is the antidote to this. The gospel is the power of God for right. the salvation. Well, I want to say whether you're afraid for your life or whether you've found emptiness in religion, Christ alone is the answer. Turn to him and call on him and be saved. Keep looking up. He's coming back.